Well, hello, Sonoma County. We're back again today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Santa Rosa. Actually, I'm gonna talk a lot about Santa Rosa today. Santa Rosa being the largest city in our county has so much to offer and so much going on. I wanna try and give you guys a real feel of what living in Santa Rosa feels like, what's going on in the city, how it operates, what's there to do, where to go, what housing looks like in different areas. So stay tuned for a lot of information, all Santa Rosa today. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Julie with Sullivan Group Real Estate, and we help people move in and out and all around Santa Rosa and Sonoma County every year. So if you're thinking about making a move, reach out. We'd love to help get the right steps in place, educate you about everything Sonoma County and help you make the perfect choice here in our beautiful area. So, Santa Rosa. Now, let's give you some location points to kind of give you a better idea of where Santa Rosa is. It is located kind of right dead center of our county in Sonoma County. For uh, location purposes to a landmark everybody knows, we are 55 miles north of San Francisco. So when you get off of the Golden Gate Bridge, 55 miles up Highway 101, and there you are right smack in the middle of Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa is on both sides of Highway 101. We'll talk about more of that in a few minutes. Um, Santa Rosa is, like I said, the largest city in the county. It is the county seat. There is currently about 181,000 residents, so really a good sized city. Actually is the 25th largest city in the state of California. That gives you a little, put that headspace together there about the initial thoughts of Santa Rosa. Let me give you a little history of how Santa Rosa came to be. It was founded back in 1833. Um, before it was founded, the original habit inhabitants were the Pomo Indians. We have a huge Native American presence in California and specifically in Sonoma County. So the Pomos were here first. When the Spanish Europeans came over, they brought something with them. They brought smallpox. The smallpox virus actually decimated about 90% of the Pomo tribe. So by 1900, almost 90% of the tribe had disappeared, okay? The uh, Spaniards, the colonists came over, the explorers and the colonists, and they did settle in the Santa Rosa area. Um, in the mid 1850s, Wells Fargo actually set up a post and there was a general store. So it kind of made it an official stop on the trail, so to speak. But during that time, Santa Rosa's population stayed relatively small. And it wasn't until the railroad came through Sonoma County that we actually started seeing an increase in population and some real growth in the area. Um, then 1906 came and the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 pretty much flattened the entire town. Um, what we all know as the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, the epicenter was actually in Santa Rosa. It was right on the Rogers fault line between Santa Rosa and Sebastopol. So Sonoma County as a whole was pretty much leveled and wiped out. Of course it did rebuild and slowly and steadily saw an increase in population, but it was really during the 40s and the 50s when all the GIs came back from World War II and they were looking for housing and found their way up to Sonoma County that we really saw a big increase in um, population. And I think the last part of Santa Rosa history, I guess it is now gonna be part of our history and will be talked about forever, is the 2017 firestorm, the Tubbs fire that came through Santa Rosa. And this fire leveled 5,000 homes and buildings. It was pretty darn devastating. I was here at the time, of course, because I've been a 35 plus year resident of Sonoma County. Um, it was one scary night back in October and we, many neighborhoods were just completely wiped out and leveled to the ground. 19 people died as a result of those fires, as well as the loss in real estate. This town, as it has in the past, has completely rebuilt. 
or I'm gonna say 90 to 95% has rebuilt and risen from the ashes and it's better than ever. The homes are beautiful. Uh, commercial spaces are back and we lost restaurants, we lost hotels, we lost businesses and uh, what a resilient town we have proven to be and have rebuilt after those fires. So what does make Santa Rosa so appealing? It is a big city, it, a big city for sure in our area. Um, it is a culturally diverse city, which you would expect in a city of this size. But what is so appealing about this Santa Rosa? Well, I think number one thing is you have to talk about our weather, okay? We do live in a warm metro, uh, Mediterranean type climate where we have like pretty mild winters and nice warm summers. I mean, it doesn't really get below like 30 degrees and gets above 90, you know, get into the 90s in the summer, you'll have the occasional heat wave, but we do have the coast not too far from us and that fog comes trailing in over the hills between us and the coast, cools us down beautifully. It's just ideal weather. We do a lot of stuff outside. Um, speaking of the coast, we have our beaches. I mean, just a 30 minute drive from Santa Rosa and you are in Bodega Bay and those North Coast beaches that just line up and down the North Coast area. You get sand in your toes, you can listen to the waves, mild temperatures. Our water's cold up here though. It's not like Southern California or other parts of the country when you go to the ocean and the water's warm. Our ocean waters are cold and surfers and swimmers do put on wetsuits. This is probably a fact a lot of you didn't know, but Santa Rosa is now known as where wine country meets beer. It is actually the beer, the craft beer capital of the United States. We have so many, Santa Rosa proper itself has 12 plus locally uh, craft breweries here in town. I mean, it, they're amazing. You know, many of them have restaurants attached to them or they bring food trucks in and it's just, it's really a fun kind of newer scene here in what has always been known as wine country. We have a really bustling downtown with lots of um, little boutiques and art galleries. Of course, you know, amazing restaurants, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, we have this revitalized downtown square that over the last five, six years, they've been redoing. Um, they just did this huge, beautiful art installation in the middle of the square of this lovely sculpture. Um, the downtown area is just really a fun place to be. It's a little bit of a mix of old town and when you walk down like 4th Street or 3rd Street or Main Streets downtown, the, the storefronts are still older, which is kind of fun, but inside and behind those storefronts are some really amazing businesses and most of them are local small town mom and pop shops. In the fall, or it starts in the spring and it runs through the fall, again, because our weather is so beautiful, is Santa Rosa's Wednesday night farmer's market. It is just such a wonderful event that brings out our friendly community and there's fresh produce, there's again, food trucks, all the restaurants are open, a lot of them have seating out on the sidewalks. There's um, handmade crafts, there's usually live music, people make a picnic and sit in the square. And that is every Wednesday night, like I said, from the spring all the way through the fall here in downtown. And, and in fact, it should be starting up here anytime and I can't wait. It's just a really fun, fun time to go a couple times a month. We go hang out down there on a Wednesday night. Okay, and then of course there's wine tasting galore. Um, Sonoma County wide, we have like 495 wineries and many of them are right in the Santa Rosa proper. So uh, these are world famous, world-class wines. I mean, literally known around the world. You can find them in restaurants, probably anywhere you travel in the world, there will be some Sonoma County wine and a lot of them right out of the Santa Rosa city area. We do have a pretty lively arts and culture scene. Like again, for a city this size, we should have some um, live art and, and live culture and live plays. We have the Luther Burbank um, Center for the Arts, which has uh, plays and concerts and events all year long. We have local talent that puts on several different plays throughout the year at the 6th Street Playhouse. There's the uh, kind of Broadway style shows that the Transcend Transcendence Company puts on each summer in an outdoor theater, which is really fun. We have endless outdoor activities. 
Going back to that weather again, you guys, when you have good weather, you want to be outside. We have, um, I mean, there's city, county, regional parks all throughout Santa Rosa with miles of hiking and biking trails. We have a couple little lakes where you can go paddle boarding. Uh, they, we've got paddle boats, fishing, uh, there's zip lining, there's camping, just all sorts of stuff. Fun camp activities in the summer for the kids as well, like outdoor day camps, overnight camps. Uh, just, if you wanna be outside, this is the place to come. And then let's talk about our restaurants. Santa Rosa is known for some of the finest dining. It's actually getting quite the reputation as one of the um, farmed table foodie destinations in the United States because we are real big on farm to table. We still have a lot of agriculture in this area. A lot of our produce is grown right here. There's still a lot of um, cattle and sheep grown in the area, a lot of fishing because the coast is just 30 minutes away. So a lot of fresh fish and a lot of our, our restaurants as well. In fact, check out one of our other videos in our video collection because we did do um, a whole video on some of our favorite restaurants here in Santa Rosa. Something we are really proud of in Santa Rosa and in Sonoma County is the Sonoma County Airport. The Charles M. Schultz Airport, named after our famous Charles M. Schultz, the creator of the Snoopy comic strip. Um, it does sit right in Santa Rosa, and the airport has, it's been there for years, but it's always just been this one little airstrip kind of for, little, for the personal pilot that has their little jet or whatever, but now it is a commercial airlines airport and has been growing and expanding. And we are just so thrilled as residents here to be able to fly in and out to a a lot of different locations now right out of Santa Rosa before we always had to go to either San Francisco International Airport or Oakland International Airport which are both about an hour and a half away and we still do when you have when you're going places that this little airport doesn't go but if we're just flying down to like Burbank or Orange County um, Palm Springs uh, LA I think it does go into LAX um, Portland Seattle Dallas Las Vegas we can go in and out of Santa Rosa now, which is so cool. And over the next couple years, they're actually hoping to do more eastbound flights to a couple like hub airports that they're called hub airports. And it would be like Denver and Chicago are on their radar because if we can get from here to Denver, or Chicago, we can get to just about anywhere in the world. So hopefully eliminating that drive to San Francisco or Oakland to the bigger airports. Um, we just in this past November opened a beautiful new terminal building in the airport. It's part of the $40 million airport modernization project that's going on. Um, you guys, our terminal before they built this one was literally a tent. It was like one of those big white, I mean like permanent tents, but it was a tent. So now we actually have a building with real luggage carousels and new security line and check-in counters and so on. Like we're a real bona fide airport now. Pretty big deal around here. <laughs> All right, so what does it look like to live in Santa Rosa? Okay, you, you name it, there's just about every different kind type of housing available here in town. Now remember this started out as a very much more agricultural county. I mean, it's still, don't get me wrong, agriculture is still probably, you know, tops the list, right, probably right up there with tourism in the county with all of our grape growing and like I said there still is a lot of produce and um, ranching going on. Uh, so there are a lot of country properties, single family homes in all sizes, duplexes, multifamily housing, apartment complexes, um, older complexes, newer complexes. So let, let's kind of touch base. Let me give you an idea of how we break down this city um, in real estate terms or for real estate purposes, we divide Santa Rosa up into four different quadrants. So you have Northeast, Southeast, Northwest, and Southwest with Highway 101, our big main multi-lane highway that goes right up the middle of the county, kind of dividing um, the quadrants West and East, and then you've got your North and South. So that's how we'll talk about it. Um, the Northeast and Southeast quadrants they were probably some of the um, like original, let's call them subdivisions, you know, where a contractor came in and built, you know, a certain amount of blocks and the houses kind of looked the same, ranging anywhere from, you know, 
little two ba three bedroom, two bath, 1200 square foot, single story homes up to much larger homes. Some of those subdivisions, they were started back like in the 60s and 70s. And new building has also occurred over the years and new neighborhoods have popped up in the, the 90s and the 2000s, of course. The, the schools are just really well known and, and touted in the Northeast and Southeast quadrants. Families always really, you know, when we work with clients and there's families and school aged kids, they, they know about Rincon Valley and Bennett Valley, those two areas, because their schools are so well known and have a very good reputation. Um, also in the northeast quadrant, kind of on the east side of the quadrant, is a community called Oakmont. Oakmont is our senior living community, um, so you have to be 55 or over to live in there. It, it's kind of a city in itself in there. There's 3,200 homes in Oakmont, so it is, it's, it's quite a sizable community, so they have their own post office, banks, stores. Um, it has all the amenities that you would imagine a 55 and over community to have. They have a couple golf courses, there's swimming pools, tennis courts, uh, pickleball courts, you know, pickleball, that's the big thing in California right now. <laughs> I, I don't know if it is in the other parts of the country, but it's a big deal around here. Um, there's bocce ball courts. They have a rec center where they have parties and classes and lectures, I mean, and so much more. I mean, it's just, there's a library, there's a computer lab center. There's, I mean, you, you can do everything or you could do nothing, but it has it has all the amenities you, you could imagine. Last I heard, there was even like 130 different clubs you could join, you know, probably for every ethnicity, the Irish club and the Italian club and the Spanish speaking club and the whatever, so the crafting clubs and all. So, so really a great community. You know, my aunt and uncle actually moved up there uh, quite a few years back now, but um, they came up from San Francisco and these guys were longtime San Franciscans. So, you know, living in the big city, they were very involved in a lot of different San Francisco communities and groups and clubs. And when they said they were moving to Oakmont, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be for them. They love it. They absolutely love it. They call it the compound and they just, they go to all the little activities and my uncle's a golfer. And, so anyway, they, they just really enjoy it. And it, it is a beautiful community and everyone kind of looks out for each other. So that's kind of the Northeast. We talked a little bit about the Southeast. Then as you come up over the hill, there's a hill that you come up over to get down into the Northwest quadrant. And we call that the Fountain Grove neighborhood. Fountain Grove was completely burned in the fires. That fire started at one end of the hill and went all the way up and over the other end. Um, that was where a large number of our homes were burned. And this was, it, it was and is a beautiful executive type community, larger homes on larger lots. Uh, I, I would, I don't think you'd find a single family home in Fountain Grove under 1.5 million, upwards of four plus million, depending on square footage. I mean, the homes get as big as four and 5,000 square feet on, on multiple acres of land. Um, beautiful homes. It is probably about 90% rebuilt. If you drive around, you can still find some individual lots that have not rebuilt yet, but it's even more beautiful than it was before. And of course, modern, the original builds, Fountain Grove probably came to be in the late 80s and 90s. So the houses were getting to be about 30 years old. I mean, not that they needed to burn down, but uh, the, the, just what they have rebuilt is just absolutely gorgeous and so happy for those folks who are now back in their homes and back in their new homes. So that, that's the Fountain Grove area. There are some beautiful condo um, options in Fountain Grove as well, some kind of executive type uh, condominium complexes that you know, the business professionals, healthcare workers, a lot, a lot of those type of folks choose that kind of living in these, in these complexes that are, they're gorgeous. So as you come down into the Northwest community, Northwest is a really cool mix of some family neighborhoods, more subdivision looking type neighborhoods, kind of all different um, age groups. The Northwest Quadrant also got hit pretty hard in the fire. So some of those, there was a couple um, Mark West Estates and Larkfield area that really, they were older homes built probably back in the 50s. And again, those neighborhoods were just wiped out, uh, just burned to the ground and have rebuilt. And again, are just these gorgeous homes on kind of larger lots than 
you'd find like in the northeast quadrant of Rincon Valley. Um, and there's some beautiful country properties out in the northwest area. Another kind of now famous community, if y'all were watching the news and remember any of this from those fires, was Coffee Park, where as the fire came over Fountain Grove, it actually jumped Highway 101, which is an eight lane freeway. This fire jumped an eight lane freeway and went into Coffee Park and completely burned that whole neighborhood. Um, it also is pretty much rebuilt. I'm gonna say Coffee Park is probably upwards of 99% um, all new homes. The park in the middle of the subdivision or the middle of the neighborhood has been redone and is just gorgeous with lots of lawn and paths and a great playground for kids um, and a wonderful choice of, of housing. And we are already seeing some, some of those new builds come back on the market as people's lives change or they decide to move on to other areas. And we're seeing those homes sell like in the seven and eight hundred thousands and remember you guys these are just homes that are only a few years old so uh kind of kind of a, a deal i guess you would say for almost for an almost new build so and then the southwest quadrant is probably housing wise one of our um newer subdivision areas with those homes being built probably in the 90s and early 2000s uh, again great homes great subdivisions and then out on the outskirts of those subdivisions, again, are more rural country properties. So Santa Rosa really has a little bit for everyone, different price points in the different quadrants as well. We can talk more about that. If Santa Rosa's on your radar is maybe your next place to call home. Um, oh, one area we didn't talk about is down in the Santa Rosa downtown area is, that's where the really cool old homes are where the, the original homes in Santa Rosa were built, some of them dating back to like the 1900s. Like the McDonald District is one example of those homes. Um, and over by Juilliard Park, these homes are just so charming. Like all the charm and character that you picture in those old homes, many have been res uh, like updated, but yet restored, you know, kept their, their old character. And they're just gorgeous. I love walking through that neighborhood and checking out all the homes. And it's a really a coveted area. Something comes up for sale in that area and it's usually grabbed up by somebody pretty darn quick. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what Santa Rosa's like. It's just a wonderful city as is all of Sonoma County. Um, again, I think one of the big draws to Sonoma County and it might be why you're kind of looking here is even though a lot of our home prices are, well, our home prices are increasing over the years and we do have some high-end properties, but overall in the greater Bay Area, we are one of the more affordable counties. Santa Rosa being one of the more affordable big cities in certainly Northern California and probably all of the state of California. So it is a big draw. It is still commutable. I mean, I know 55 miles back to San Francisco is, is starting to get to be a little bit of a trek each day. We do have a smart train that runs from Santa Rosa into Marin County, and then you can take the ferry across the bay. There are options like that, and there, there's plans in the works to improve all of those systems as well for mass transit. Um, but a lot of people do make that commute into San Francisco every day or into Marin County, which is the county between San Francisco and Sonoma County. And again, the cost of living is much higher there. So. We'd love to have you come check out Santa Rosa and Sonoma County. Click like if you like this video, subscribe to our channel. If you wanna learn more about Sonoma County and Sonoma County real estate, you can ding the bell. We release new videos every week and we'd love to have you know when they're available to watch. And as always, if you have any questions about Sonoma County or Sonoma County real estate, or you wanna start putting the puzzle pieces together for your relocation or your move here within Sonoma County, reach out, we would love to help you. Thanks for watching.